Buying your first car used to be a case of opening the used car classifieds for something in reasonably good nick that fit inside your pretty tight budget. But these days there's a whole range of brand new cars, all for around 15 grand. But we've assembled four of the best city cars, the Holden Spark, the Kia Picanto, Suzuki Celeria and Mitsubishi Mirage. All four are cheap, but which one is the most cheerful? The new Holden Spark has ditched the Barina name of its predecessor, but kept the same small and simple philosophy. Priced from $16,990 drive away for the automatic version we're testing here, the Spark LS is the equal most expensive of this quartet along with the Mitsubishi. But it comes with a 7 inch touchscreen compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 6 speaker sound system, Bluetooth and 6 airbags. However, you don't get a reversing camera, parking sensors or cruise control. You do, however, get the largest and most powerful engine of this quartet, albeit a relatively small 1.4 litre four cylinder that produces a relatively modest 73 kilowatts of power and 124 newton metres of torque. The engine's paired to a nicely sorted chassis, particularly at this end of the market. It's hardly a hot hatch, but it is actually quite a fun and enjoyable car to zip around town and in and out of traffic. But what impresses more though with the Spark is actually just the way it feels and how it presents inside. The cabin is actually really good quality, again, for the price that you're paying. Not only do you get the touchscreen with all the clever smartphone goodies, just the level of detail to the design, there's lots of materi different materials used, used well, not, it's not just a hodgepodge of different materials, but there's actually you know, some nicer shinier elements, some gloss black trim that just lifts the overall ambience of the cabin to something more than just, you know, a cheap, basic car. Kia has built its reputation on affordable compact cars, but the new Picanto slots in at the bottom of the range beneath the Rio. Available in a single specification, it comes standard with a four-speed automatic for 14,990 drive away. Standard gear includes a four-speaker stereo, Bluetooth, rear parking sensors and six airbags. But it does miss out on the touchscreen offered by the Holden, which means no clever smartphone integration. Under the bonnet, the Kia's 1.2-litre four-cylinder engine produces 63 kilowatts and 120 newton metres, mated to an old-fashioned four-speed automatic transmission. While the Picanto is new to Australia, it's been in Europe for the last five years. Having said that, it's not a bad car to drive. The steering is light and it's pretty easy to manoeuvre around town. One important error the Picanto has on all its rivals is its warranty. At seven years and unlimited kilometres, it's comfortably the most generous offered here. Adding to its ownership credentials is a seven year capped priced servicing plan to add extra peace of mind when purchasing. And that's something that counts for a lot at this price sensitive end of the market. The headline attraction for the Suzuki Celeria is the price. At $12,990 drive away for the manual variant, it is by far the cheapest new car available in Australia today. Even with the optional CVT automatic, it is still the most affordable, priced at just $14,490 drive away. Hardly surprisingly at that price, the Suzuki is light on standard equipment, but you do get a four speaker sound system, air conditioning, Bluetooth and six airbags. It is also the only car here that does not earn a five star ANCAP crash rating, instead getting a four star. The Solaria gets a tiny one litre three cylinder engine that produces a modest 50 kilowatts of power and 90 newton metres of torque. Look, the three-cylinder engine isn't going to win you a Grand Prix, but it's got enough grunt to, you know, haul this little car along okay, particularly around town. And look, while the interior isn't going to win any design awards necessarily, there's actually a little bit of thought that's gone into it. You know, there's some storage spaces for your phone and some odds and ends. The door pockets are very thin, but overall, it's actually pretty impressive, particularly when you look at the panel gaps, because at the end of the day, this is the cheapest car you can buy on the market but it's actually bolted together really well. This isn't cheap and nasty. One issue with the Solaria is it is strictly a four-seater. There's only two seat belts in the back. However, in its defense, none of these cars can really be classified as comfortable five-seaters, even with the smallest of friends and family. 
The Mitsubishi Mirage is the oldest member of this group, having originally gone on sale back in 2013. However, a midlife update at the start of 2016 has kept it fresh against the influx of new rivals. At 16,990 drive away, the top spec Mirage LS we're testing is the equal most expensive of this group on par with the Holden. It comes equipped with the basics, including a four-speaker sound system, Bluetooth, air conditioning and six airbags, plus it gets cruise control. The latest upgrades do bring some added bling to the Mirage, with chrome look finishes to the exterior and 15-inch alloy wheels. Like the Suzuki, the Mirage also gets a three-cylinder engine, but it's slightly larger, a 1.2-litre unit that makes 57 kilowatts and 100 newton metres. The Mirage was one of the most popular hatchbacks in the 1990s and this latest edition sticks to the same formula of simple no frills motoring. It's small and light but it lacks power and it needs a bit of a push to get going. Well none of these cars are designed for the big family trips but of the four the Mirage has arguably the deepest and widest boot. Plenty of room for your shopping. Steve, we can agree that the Holden is the best car. It looks, feels and drives more premium, but it comes at a premium cost of more than $2,000 compared to the others. And that makes a difference when you're on a budget. But I think we can both agree the Kia is the winner in this contest. The Picanto does all the basics well, and its seven-year warranty gives it unbeatable peace of mind. Just what you want in your first car.